Hey everybody, what's up? It's Gerald here. Um, good afternoon. How are you? I'm so excited to talk to you all today. Hey Angela, how are you? Oh my gosh, y'all. Angela gets the like attendance award. I feel like she's always the first person to clock in. Either her or um Courtney. I'm well, how are you? <laughs> awesome. Um, I have my camera so weird today. Y'all, I was just going to sit at my normal spot, but I was like, no, nah, let me do it from the couch today. Hey, Nicole. No, you didn't miss a thing. Stop. <laughs> By the way, you all, I think I'm going to just start doing this at 1230 every day. I think that's the time that works best and I want to be consistent. So from here on out, let's just plan for 12.30, unless I specify otherwise. All right, I think I have my camera the way I want it. So both of y'all were here yesterday for my talk. All right, I'm gonna flip this around so I can get the camera the way I want it. There we go. Awesome, Angela. I love interacting with you all when I record these things. Like I could do pre-recorded videos and I will eventually, but it's so much fun just being live and like talking to you all. Y'all are like, y'all are really becoming my for real friends, not just like people in internet land, but my real friends. <laughs> anyway, so y'all, yesterday I was at the bookstore and I was getting some work done, right, Nicole? I was getting some work done and I took a break to look at some books in the new age section, which I love to do. And I saw this book, Seed of the Soul by Gary Zukov. And I've always been curious about it because Oprah talks about how she read it, you know, when she was first starting out and it really transformed her life. And so I was flipping through it and I wasn't really too committed to reading anything because I was focused on work, but flip through there First, I saw a section on intuition, so that intrigued me, of course. I started reading that, and then I flipped throughout the book, and I saw a chapter, a whole chapter on trust, and y'all know from watching the video yesterday, that's literally what I was just talking about, so I was like, let me just read what it says. Y'all, I want to tell you everything that I had experienced recently and was learning about was in that book, and y'all, this book was written back in like... It was a 25-year edition, so it was at least 25 years ago. The same thoughts that I was having, experiences I was having, he wrote about 25 years ago. So that like was like, oh, I mean, specifically, the stuff that was in my video yesterday, he was talking about in the book. So it clued me into like many things. You know, one is that, you know, synchronicity, Finding the information you need when it speaks to you, you know, that synchronicity. Also, like, our lessons are, like, not new. There's nothing new under the sun. Like, it's just you reach a certain level of development where you can start to learn about those things. I know that I've reached that point in my life. So that was, like, kind of crazy, and it confirmed stuff for me. It's like, oh, my gosh, like, not only am I experiencing these things, they're, like, new and they're revelatory to me, but it's like, no, this is, like, a part of a journey that's been outlined and, like, practice. It's not just, like, something that you're experiencing. It's, like, a universal um, truth or something. You know what I mean? So it was, like, crazy to see that. And the insight, the information, y'all, you know, if we take the time to learn and open ourselves up to different um, knowledge and wisdom... We can use it. Yeah, Angela. <laughs> we can use it to like, really enhance our lives and um, and just like make it better. Because y'all, plenty of people written plenty of books. Like there's really nothing new under the sun. Another thing that I realized is that, you know, my experience, a lot of wisdom that I come up with, like when I do these videos, it's, they're not planned out. You know, I thought about, you know, planning stuff and writing it down, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is they're spontaneous. 
And I do feel like I'm channeling when I make these videos. Like, I don't know what's going to come out. But it's always, like, I think it's always substantial. There's substance to it. And, like, people really gain a benefit. And that's partially because, like, I just transmit information where I'm, like, a clear channel. So I open up to guidance and it comes out. So it's interesting to confirm that, like, the wisdom that comes out of me or through me is also found in other sources, you know, like books that have been written, which talk about the exact same thing. And not, as, not only is this any kind of book, this is the book that Oprah credits to shaping her life. You know what I mean? I think if anybody chose an example of success, Oprah would definitely be one of them, you know. So it's pretty remarkable, y'all, when you think about it. Um, I was thrilled to see that. And of course, I wanted to read the book, but y'all know I have a, my list of books to read is insane. Yeah, right, Nicole? <laughs> and we need that confirmation sometimes, you know, like some of the stuff we do is so unorthodox or it's so outside of the box of what we've been given. But it's like, no, the, like, stuff like that does, um, it does confirm things for you. It um, validates you in certain ways. So it's really cool. What a gift to you all. Yeah, absolutely, Angela. Absolutely. And it's important to share. That's why I love doing these videos. And I love hearing from you all. So, yeah, that was my exciting thing for yesterday. Seed of the Soul is a book. I will get to it eventually. Um, but, y'all, I have such an enormous stack of books to read through and stuff. I don't know when or how I'm going to do it, but I will do it. I saw this other really good book, too, you all. Describing the nature of the universe, and it kind of went into how um, it talked about many different subjects, but it talked about sacred geometry in a way that I've never heard of it talked before. It really intrigued me, and then it kind of went into like aliens and magic and a lot of taboo subjects, but in such a clear way. It was written by Dave Wilcox, I, I believe it's his name, and I can't remember the name of the universe of the um, book. It was something like the dark. I don't know, but it was really good, too. I took a picture of it, so I'll probably read that eventually. It was saying how um, the thing that really intrigued me was talking about how, like, atoms at the core, they're not, like, solid. It's probably just angles, how they come together. It's like energy and the angles that they come together in is how atoms and different, like, protons are formed in atoms. And so we think everything is solid and that there's matter and it's so blah, blah, blah. But really, it's all just energy, like from it's at the deepest level. And it's all sacred geometry, which is really fascinating. They talked about the experiments with water. I've seen the ones with sand where they put sand on like a metal plate and then they vibrate the plate and then different geometrical formations will come out. I've seen that one before. But they show this one thing with um, drops of water that may have had sand in them. But they would vibrate a frequency between it. And then all of these formations would come out, you all. And they're very specific. Like one was like the Star of David, which is, you know, a huge one. And I was like, that is so freaking fascinating. Um, anyway, that's a whole... I didn't really want to go into that today. But yeah, that's what I experienced yesterday, you all. It's pretty cool. Um... It makes me curious about different ways to open yourself up to learning from different experiences, you know? And I think it's a perfect demonstration of the left and the right side of the brain or the spiritual and the physical ways of learning. You know, it's like I opened up my channel and I intuited wisdom and information, like inner wisdom, and I expressed that yesterday. And then... I was in a bookstore and I read about it. So that's the logical. That's the external. Same wisdom. So it's like it can manifest in different ways. But y'all, just openness to learning. Um, and like just awareness of your life and different things can be transformational. Yes. Have y'all read any of those books or have y'all experienced any of that before? I'm really curious to know. Um... All right, y'all, another thing is, <laughs> yeah, right, Nicole? 
And you're a librarian, y'all. So she's around books all day. <laughs> oh no, I've been drawn to certain books before like that. And it's just like, I had no clue. Like, I had no like idea what I was uncovering. Yeah, Nicole, it's like, who, there's never enough time, but it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many things to, to explore and read and so many perspectives. Um, I'm, I really need to go on my reading tip. Like, I want to do, I want to read an hour a day every day. So I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could do it today. Welcome, whoever just joined. Um, another thing that happened yesterday, you all, was... Y'all know how I've been on my decluttering tip and clearing out and talking about how spiritual that work is. Yes, Angela, me too. And that's good because y'all, you're building your library, which is cool. I try not to accumulate things unnecessarily, but it's like, you know, it's great to have all those things at your disposal. And when you are ready or when things do happen, you can reference them. So it's not a bad thing to... Um, to have them, but I'm just very vigilant. Oh, awesome, April, welcome. Um, April is always lurking somewhere nearby. <laughs> um, the other thing y'all is, y'all know I've been talking about decluttering. And, oh, I love when you can type. I'm glad you joined on your computer. Um, Y'all, I watched Marie Kondo yesterday again. I watched my second episode because multiple people told me, y'all, you should do that. My brother, I think April told me, and a few other people were like, see more than one episode. Because I got the gist of it from one episode. And I really try to minimize just consuming media and stuff like that. But I watched the second episode, and y'all, it was amazing. I love the approach that Marie has. Yeah, seriously, April, like, I love her approach, um, especially when she starts off by, like, thanking the home and kind of, like, asking for the home's blessing to do the work. That is so crucial. And the couple that I watched yesterday, it was, like, they were an older couple. Um, they knew that they needed to make the change, but they didn't kind of really know how to start just on their own. So they invited her in their home. But the thing I love about the show is they do all the work themselves. She gives recommendations, but it's not like a lot of makeover shows where they just like the family stands around and they do all the work and then they come back as a big reveal and they buy a bunch of stuff and they paint a bunch of stuff. It's like, no, it's you do the work. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens over like a period of like six weeks or so. And then at the end, it doesn't, the home is not transformed because like everything looks different. It's their same freaking home. Ooh, April, yes, I was so inspired yesterday. It's the same freaking home. It looks like their freaking home, but the beauty is it is that it is their home. It's not this new thing, sparkly, shiny, new. No, it's their old freaking home. They just have charged it with good energy. They've cleaned it. They've um, put value back into it. Like it's they they thank it and then they give it the respect and the love that it deserves. It's not about buying new stuff, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, this is your home. And they did the work. So, which means they received the value from the whole process. And I love it. It brings out different aspects of themselves that they may not have even known was there or it rekindles certain things that they used to have. It is beautiful. And so, like, the first episode, I didn't care for a lot because... Absolutely, Angela, which is the biggest thing. You know, like we look for all this external stuff. And it's like, no, uh, what we need is the internal fulfillment, not the external. All right, Nicole, it was the second one in the series that I watched. The first one I watched was um, this young California couple, and they got on my nerves a little bit because they were very immature. Um, they were, they were kind of inappropriate in ways to her. I mean, she is coming from another culture, and... <sighs> That's one of the cool things about the show, but they didn't really, um, they weren't really respectful of that. And they were just very immature. It just irked me a little bit watching that. But it was a good show, and I did enjoy the episode. It was just, like, little things like that. But seeing the second show, like, the couple was um, Japanese heritage. So they had that respect level there. It was really interesting. And they were an older couple, and... 
It was just different. So I really enjoyed that. I started watching the third one right before this. I started recording this. And it's a young black couple. So I'm really interested. Oh, yeah. Sorry, April. It's hiding up with Marie Kondo. Yes, it's on Netflix. Um, yeah, so that was really interesting. Um, but it just really, once again, it just underscored all the things that we talk about. And I hadn't seen the show, really. So all the points that I talked about, it just kind of like... Uh, reiterated it and it was cool to see that in action yeah my mom mentioned her book spark joy like years ago she was reading it and she loved it and i was like that's interesting um i didn't think much of it because i'm like i already know how to organize like i'm a virgo that's what we do <laughs> but it was cool but now seeing her like approach and her method and everything it's really really cool because it represents some things Wait, there's a manga version, Angela? That is cool. That is so cool. Um, it represents values that we don't really have as Americans. Um, things that we have straight away from because of capitalism and constantly being sold to. And things. So she comes from another culture, and it's really cool to see her bring those values back. So, yes, I just want to tell you all, I took your recommendation. I watched the show. I'll probably be watching some more episodes. So, thank you for that. And, y'all, like, keep doing the work. I know there are people in this group, because I talked to you all. I know y'all are doing the work. And it's cool to, like, share our journeys, because uh, every day is a journey for me. Every day is an adventure, Yes, Nicole, like, and y'all don't mindlessly consume. You don't have to watch the whole series or whatever, but like, you know, if something helps you, like, definitely take, because like, I don't want to be anti-TV, anti-Netflix or whatever, like, everything in balance, but it's like, everything really should enhance your life. It shouldn't detract. Um, Everything should empower you. It shouldn't disempower you. That's what we're moving towards, like being empowered individuals. So, y'all, if that's an experience, which... Oh, uh, see, there you go, April. That's a win-win. If um, if there's something that will help you, and just because it's on TV or Netflix, like, doesn't mean you can't do it. Like, definitely. Just make sure you're being mindful. Oh, cool, Nicole. I wonder if you can tell us the name of that. Just be mindful in your consumption. Don't be a mindless consumer. Like, in life, everybody, I, I had this realization about business a while ago, but in business and in life, y'all leverage everything. Everything that you have to help promote you, to move you forward, to enhance you, use that. Everything that holds you back, that disempowers you, whatever, get rid of it. Okay? All right, while we're talking about favorite things, y'all, the last thing I do want to talk about is Kyle Cease. There are lots of people on YouTube that, like, discuss spiritual things or they discuss self-help or blah, blah, blah. And different people resonate with different things. You all, Kyle Cease is this guy that I have really, really, really been resonating with. <laughs> He's perfect for where I am in my life right now. And y'all may appreciate him, too. If you're in the Money Manifestation group... I um, did post one of his videos. I hope y'all got a chance to watch it. It's one of his longer ones. It's like an hour long. But y'all, he's giving me such great realizations. And I'm really trying to incorporate the lessons that he shared. Um, but one thing that's really helped me that I discovered last night. All right, he has two things. Let me say the first thing. The first thing is he says, like he gets you to remove resistance in your life by saying, um, I love that after whatever statement, because y'all, we feel like we should be this way or we should do these things or blah, 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 blah. And like, it's like, no, like every experience is what it should be. Like you just have to, to accept it. And your acceptance allows other things to happen. Like you can move more deeply into the experience and then have deeper realizations and stuff. But follow every experience by saying, I love that. So if you're feeling frustrated, I'd say, I feel frustrated right now. And I love that. If you're bored, say, I feel bored right now. And I love that. If you can't pay rent, say, I don't think I, I don't think I can pay rent this month. And I love that. It like really removes the resistance and helps you be like open to different opportunities, possibilities, lessons that comes. So that was my first thing that I heard him say that I really like. It really awed me. I was like, whoa. <laughs> um, what I heard him say last night, which was really cool, was like, just sit 
And whatever experience comes up, just let it be. Don't try to fix it. Don't try to basically do the same thing, like send love towards it. So like I was laying in my apartment. I was like, I'm, I feel overwhelmed. And don't try to fix it. Don't try to move it. Don't try to put in a new, a new light. Don't try to anything. Just like let it be. I was like, that's freaking cool. Because a lot of times you all, and we always think we're making such progress until we realize this on a deeper level. But I, like, we all really ignore our emotions and our bodies because we're constantly trying to move towards some idea of something. And we we don't just be. We don't just let things out. So he was like, you know, do it for whatever amount of time. Yeah, Angela, it stalls all of us. So we're always consumed with what we want to be or where we're trying to be. What you know, we always try to move something into something else. But it's like just let it be. Like just experience your life without any judgment of if it's good, bad, or whatever. Just like let it be. So I just sat on my couch. I was like, you know. I'm overwhelmed. I keep trying to distract myself from the fact that I'm overwhelmed. Like, I think I can handle it all or I want to think I can. So I try to convince myself. And it's like, no, like, just, just let it be. Not what you hope. Like, I hope I can do something about this. Not what you fear. Just what is. I was like, that was groundbreaking. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I need to do that. Like, I'm not acknowledging myself and my feelings enough about things. It's like I'm constantly preoccupied with where I'm headed, what I'm trying to create, what um, other people expect of me, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, like, just sit with it. Yeah, April, that one's transformational. But this new level, I guess, now that I've gotten there, it's like, not like, just be... And it's the same that I read about in this Eckhart Tolle book, Eckhart Tolle, the one that I always recommend, A New Earth. He says, you know, just observe yourself. Just observe the behaviors. And you don't have to try to change it or do anything. Because as you become aware of things, it will naturally change on its own. It's not your job. If you try to change it, you'll end up frustrating yourself or you'll mess it up. Because, like, um, you that's giving it energy. Like, when you actually think about it, then you energize it. So it creates more of it. But when you just observe, it'll naturally correct itself. And he says it in another way in that book, but it's really interesting. Like if you just sit and, all right, sorry. Um, if you just sit and allow yourself to be, then you can acknowledge those things as they come up. And that'll take you, take you into a deeper level of um, awareness and meaning in your life. So y'all, I'm going to really work on that soon, y'all. This journey is, is opening up so many different things. And like, I've always been an introspective person and analytical as well. But these new decisions that I've made in my life and this new breaking of patterns and things, it's like open up this deeper level of awareness. And I'm really excited for that, you know. I'm really excited. And hopefully my journey is helping other people in that regard or in just any way because um, cause we're here to share. So this is really, really fun for me. And that's it for today, y'all. That's all of my like recent discoveries. Do y'all have any spiritual people that y'all really enjoy on um, YouTube? I have a few. I need to put my recommendations somewhere, but I love Ashira Star Goddess that, you know, many of you all know. She is the best. Oh, her videos yesterday, too, were really good, you all. Like, she dropped some serious information in those videos that a lot of people I don't even know, or, like, can appreciate because it's so next level. Ashira Star Goddess. Um, Kyle Cease is my fave. Yes, Angela. Oh my gosh. She's the real deal. Um, Kyle Cease is amazing. Onyx Moon, you all. Like, I don't even share him with most people because he's that good. Oh yeah, Bahati Life. Yeah, she's good. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I need to watch more of her stuff, but she's really good. She's been recommended to me by some friends, and I really enjoy her stuff. Um, but yeah, find your people you resonate with, you all. There are people who like are good who I just don't resonate with, and it's totally fine. Like, Man of Letters is great. He's not my favorite. Like, I don't personally resonate with him, but he's really good. And you all, like, now that I think about one other thing that I want to start doing is really um, start documenting more of my journey because it is, I don't think it's necessary to document and always write everything down. I think that can be another distraction. But when you do write stuff down, you do have a record. So when things happen, it's like it validates you a little more. It's like, oh, yeah, because one thing I do find is when you have these really big discoveries and stuff or synchronicities that happen, you can kind of forget that they happen after a while or forget the details. And then when you think back, you're like, oh, my gosh, that was really magical. That happened. And I totally forgot about it. <laughs> um, so documenting. Um, one thing I've been doing, y'all, is working with my crystal ball a lot lately transformational um really it's just meditating but when i work with the crystal ball it um it's a focal point and it's kind of exciting for me too because i know that certain things will happen after working for so long so it's motivating to get to sit still and meditate so if you aren't good on the regular traditional meditation like just sitting and being silent whatever like you can find some sort of um incentive or some sort of like object or whatever that'll help get you in that quiet place crystal ball has been transformational in that regard so that's it y'all have a great day if y'all don't have any other comments or anything i will see you all around i'll be at the shop today giving readings hopefully i have some customers and i'll let you all know all about that the next time we we meet